Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in Psalms 117. There's only two verses, so let's read both verses, Psalms 117. And it says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Um, when I think about, um, you know, praising the Lord and thanking the Lord, I try to always include that when I'm praying, to always be thankful, always be grateful. Um, you can find that if you're struggling with the flesh and trying to be um, content um, with where you are, with what you have, with what's going on, um, you can find that praising the Lord and thanking the Lord and being grateful is a good place to be to help with all that other stuff. It puts everything else in proper perspective. What it does is it causes me and it causes you to remember what the Lord has already done and to be thankful and grateful for what he's already done. And therefore, if there's something that you are desiring, if there's something that you're looking forward to, if there's something that you are waiting on or waiting for, that it makes all of that other a whole lot easier. Um, that and, and creating that correct attitude toward the Lord and toward your present circumstances. Um, it gives me perspective. I have to, um, I read through a lot of the Psalms, um, look, and I've wrote down just a whole list of things of Psalms of which ones are, to, are really praising the Lord. It's all about Him, all about praising Him. Um, a lot of the Psalms are talking about um, being in, uh, you know, needing the Lord for, to intervene, you know, that they're being surrounded by the enemy, um, you know, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and, and those, those Psalms, so there, and there, and there's so many that speak of his word, and, and I'm so grateful for his word, um, and this one here, Psalms 117, it's only two verses, but yet it says so much, so much that we can hold on to and thank him for um, and really, um, you know, give some other things proper perspective. Uh, first of all, praising the Lord, it means, it's, it's, it means to boast about him, it means to celebrate him, to give him glory. Um, I was looking through some of the Bible definitions and it even was talking about making a fool. Um, and I'm like making a fool of myself, being willing to not worry about what anybody is thinking, not what anybody might think about me, willing to make a fool of myself for the Lord, over the Lord, because of the Lord. Um, in other words, not being ashamed to say that I love the Lord, not being ashamed to say that I that I worship Him and that I praise Him, not being ashamed. Um, we, and we know if we're not ashamed of Him, He's not going to be ashamed of us. And that's something that when you're thinking about boasting and praising and celebrating um, in, in school uh, or even, even, even now, if you go to a game, um, if you go and you're going to be, you're going to be clapping and, and cheering, you're cheering for, for your team, for maybe you have somebody that's on the team and you're cheering for that person and you don't care what anybody thinks. Um, and how much more should we do that for the Lord? We should be celebrating him. We should be praising him. And I want to, I want to do that more and more and more. Um, and when, I love this part where it says all ye nations. So that's talking about every nation, not just, not just the God of the Jews, but he's the God of everyone. He's the God of everyone. And think about, um, all ye nations and all of the nations that are out there, all of the countries that are out there, and to think that we have so much in common with people all over the world because of our common purse, because of the common person that we have in common with, and that's Jesus Christ Himself. That we have, we are joined together through Jesus. He not only joins, the, Jesus joins us with God the Father, but then he also joins us with one another. And so if, you, if you're ever feeling lonely or without hope, and you, know, you, you feel like you don't connect, you actually connect with people all over the world, and that you are family with people all over the world because I'm a child of the Lord, you're a child of the Lord. That means we're siblings. That means we're brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ. And that's what joins us together. It says, praise him, all ye people, all ye people. So that's in, in our 
um, you know, in, in each little tribe and each little community that we can come together and join together and praise the Lord. Uh, when we're in church, we're, we're a little community in church. We're just a small little representation of the, of the family of God. And, and when we're together, we need to praise the Lord together. Uh, why? Why would we do that? What do we have to praise the Lord for? It was so much, so much. But if nothing else, for his merciful kindness, because he has been so good to me, he has been so good to you. Um, I think about, um, and so many times um, preachers will, will talk about the difference between a Sunday morning crowd, a Sunday night crowd, and a Wednesday night crowd, and how that you, um, uh, your, your core, you think is on Wednesday nights, the core of the people that come on Wednesday nights, you know, they're, they're like, this is, this is the core people because they're willing to come every time the doors are opened. Um, and, you know, and, and assuming that, that probably 90% are saved. Um, I know that I was one of those that was in church every time the doors was open. I wanted to be there. If it was at all possible, I wanted to be at every, um, at every meeting at every time that the church doors was open. I wanted to be there. I had a drive and a determination to be there. I was trying to get to God, but even in his mercy of me trying so hard and I was part of that Wednesday night crowd, um, Preacher Lockie was preaching through Revelation the year I got saved, and I was there every Wednesday night, and he was doing it through on Wednesday nights, scaring me to death, scared me to death, and I was, I just kept pondering on every week of whatever he went over in Revelation, and, and just thinking how scary that it, that it is, and then on that Monday night, he was so merciful and kind to me and showed me that I was lost, showed me why I was scared, showed me why that whenever Preacher Lockie would say, is your name written in that Lamb's Book of Life? Is it? Is your name written in that Lamb's Book of Life? Mine is. I used to couldn't say that. I used to wondered about it. I used to think every time Preacher Lockie would say that, I would think, I think it is. I hope it is. But I, now I know it is because on that Monday night, because of his mercy, because he was so kind to me, he showed me that I was lost, scared me to death, showed me that I was lost, showed me that even the devil and the demons believe and, and intellectually know who God is. I intellectually knew who God was because I was listening to preaching about him and I was reading the scriptures about him, but I knew that there was something that was missing in my life and I was trying so hard to get to him. And I was, I was, I was coming to church out of desperation. Lord, I'm trying to get to you. Please, Lord, please, Lord. And on Monday night at a youth meeting on Monday night, and I was uh, 28 years old, almost 29, um, he showed me I was lost and undone without him, but he made a way for me to be joined with him all because he, he'd already done it. He'd already made the way he did that from, from his mercy and his kindness. And he showed me that night and I, and I called out to him that I was a sinner and needed to be saved. And he saved my wretched soul that Monday night. And I am so thankful um, and it was because of his merciful kindness. And he has continued to be merciful with me um, when I was having a bad attitude, when I was uh, upset, when I was bitter um, about some things and, and, I, and I, needed, um, I needed correction. He has corrected me and he has helped me and he has done it in a kind, merciful way. He didn't give me what I deserved. He was merciful. What I deserved was, I mean, I deserved the hammer down. I deserved, um, you know, I deserved judgment. And he gave me mercy. And I'm just so thankful. His mercy, that's that good deed. That's that favor that he, that he shines on us. When, and, and you're like, but Lord, I didn't deserve that. He was kind anyway. Um, whenever you think about your children and you do something nice for them. It's not because they deserved it. It's not got anything to do with that. It's just because you love them. So when we read that before for his merciful kindness, he is expressing his love to us. He First of all, he did it when he sent Jesus 
from heaven, when Jesus left heaven, Jesus volunteered and said, I'm going to go be the sacrifice because no one else is worthy. No one else can do it. I'm going to go do that. He was, that was his expression of love. When God the Father sent him, that was an expression of love. When Jesus gave his life, that was the ultimate expression of love. And he continues to be merciful and kind and to do those good deeds for us and to do those, those things that he, where he's, we have found favor in his sight, not because of anything but his love and his grace and his mercy. And man, we have so much to praise him for and to thank him for and to not be embarrassed, not be embarrassed. Um, but just, just celebrate the Lord, however, um, you know, however it comes out. And if you have to stand, if you have to shout, if you have to raise your hand, if you lift your voice to the Lord, if the Lord wants you to sing a song and you're like, but Lord, I'm embarrassed. Lord, I'm going to mess it up. And he says, I want you to praise me in this song. And we sing for him and we do it for him. When I want to, when I want to play the piano for him and I know I'm going to embarrass myself, I know I'm going to because I've not arrived. I've not mastered it yet. I'm still learning. I'm still growing in this area, but he wants me to go ahead and start using using what he's already given me and he wants me to use it to praise him and I'm be willing to embarrass myself and get up there and do what I, I want to do it for him. That's why I'm up there. I'm not up there for any other reason, but that I want to do it for him. And I am willing to embarrass myself every time I mess up a note, every time I'm trying to add the pedal and I'm like, oh, it's gotten me. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the pedal and now I've lost my place on my sheet music and, and I'm thinking about it too much and I mess up, but I am doing it for him. I am praising the Lord with whatever that I have, whatever means that I have. And I'm just, I'm challenging you to use whatever means that you have. Even if you get embarrassed, even if you feel like, well, I just made a fool of myself. But when we do it for the Lord, he gets, he gets the glory. He gets glory and praise and we're celebrating him and we're boasting about him and he gets what he's, he deserves. He is give, we are giving him praise and he deserves that so much. Why? For his merciful kindness. What about it? It is great toward us. It is great. It exceeds all those other things. When you are going through a valley and he shows you some of his mercy and his kindness and that exceeds that what you're going through. That is helping you get through that day when it's just a rough day, when it's just a bad day, when you are just, you are down on yourself, when you are down on, when the circumstances are pushing you down and pulling you down and you just can't even, you don't even know what to do. But then some little something happens and you know, hey, that was the Lord. The Lord just showed his kindness and his mercy toward me and it was so exceedingly above and it prevailed it prevailed above everything else it prevailed above my grief it it, it prevailed a, a, above my my he my heavy circumstances it prevailed above the enemy no matter what or who the enemy is it prevailed above the enemy and then what else why else you know should we praise him for his merciful kindness is great toward us and what? And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. What are some truths? What are some truths about the Lord that he is always, always there? He is always, he always has been. He always will be. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never start, stop being God. We get separated from people here on earth. I miss so many people and some I they're in heaven and some I miss just because we live in separate places and I miss them terribly. I don't get to be around them as, as often as I used to be. And, and the, but the truth that, that keeps me grounded is that God is my constant. He is never going to leave me and never going to forsake me. He is always with me. He always has been. He always will be. And his truth is, gives me stability. It gives me reliability. It gives me a firm foundation. He gives me a firm foundation. That's why I don't fall apart. Now, I get upset, but I don't fall apart. 
I don't give up and give over to the enemy. I don't call surrender. I don't, I don't, I don't say that, well, I've, I've been defeated even when the devil tries to tell you that you've been defeated. No, because we are, we are grounded in his word, in his word, his truth that gives us that stability, that gives us that, um, that gives us that reliability, gives us that firm foundation. And what does he say about it? It endureth forever. It will never stop. It will endures forever, endureth forever, and that's why the this psalm closes with praise ye the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for all he's done. I want to thank him for saving me. I want to thank him that whenever I have been I've been heavy and, and, and burdened, that he has lifted me up, that he has shown me kindness and mercy and grace all in the midst of, of being in terrible circumstances or, or under the fire or under persecution or in the middle of a battle, whatever the, the circumstance may be, when I've been overcome with grief and when I've been, I've been filled with anxiety and then he's came by and he's He's blessed me in such a way that it prevailed over that anxiety and I just had had a peace that comes over that we can't even we can't even put it into words but we're going to try and we're going to try by praising the Lord by putting ourselves out there by be willing to do whatever that he wants us to do to show him that I I want to show him that I love him and if I can do that with a song, even if I don't do it correctly, if I if I miss a note, if I can do that with with sharing that with others that look at me like I got two or three heads, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that because I love the Lord and I love what He's done for me and what He's doing for me right now and that I can know that He's gonna be there for me in the future. Why? Because it He is His truth. He endures forever. His mercy endureth forever. His grace, endure, he, he endureth forever. And he's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. And so he gives me that stability. And I'm going to praise him. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.